Well, today we're going to have a quick look at global oil reserves and global oil production. We're going to look at the facts behind the headlines from today's release from Energy Institute. It is the 2024 EI Statistical Review. Pause the video if you want to read the headlines. We're going to go straight into looking at oil reserves and oil production, starting with reserves. So quick look at all the global entries for reserves. And you can see overall, we've got reserves starting back here in 1980 of around about 0.7 trillion barrels. Now, let's be clear here. A trillion is 10 to the 12 barrels or a million million barrels. OK, so let's kind of clear that up right at the start. So it's starting off at about, well, that's about 700 billion. Yes, it is. Just check that 700 billion and it's going over here up to over 2000 billion. So over this period of time, now there's a double dip here. So be very, very cautious with this graph. And that is because down at the bottom here, you can see these three entries here, Canadian oil sands total of which under active development and Venezuela Orinoco belt. So they're, they're actually tagged on there, these three bands here. And so what we're going to do without any further ado is we're going to move on and, and, and show without those because they're actually covered within the country. So there's Canada there. And I think, can I make out Venezuela? Mm, no, I can't. There it is down at the bottom there. So it's that blue one at the bottom. I think. Anyway, let's take it out and uh, make it look a little bit clearer. And here we go. So these are all the countries um, without those uh, those little breakouts. So there's no double dip in here. And uh, again, pause to have a look at uh, this. Um, the, again, the axis here is in trillions of barrels. So I think the, the reserves, well, they've been kind of flat since about 2010, perhaps some minor ads. But, you know, on top of this, you've got ads, but you've also got production decline. And you can see this brown band here, which uh, I think, as we said before, is Venezuela, the Orinoco um, tar sands, then, um, you know, these are, these are sort of skewing what's going on. But if we, uh, if we look now at the top 10 producers, and you can see of those producers, uh, here's the countries here, and this is now in billions of barrels, and this is 300 billion barrels of reserves and that's venezuela of course with the orinoco uh, orinoco oil sands uh, saudi arabia of course a major producer but also a major exporter canada here that's uh, a lot of these sort of athabasca tar sands some of which are in production but not a, a huge amount lots of reserves but not much production and not as much production iran iraq russian federation kuwait uae and there's the USA uh, in terms of reserves around about 70 billion barrels of reserves Libya and Nigeria finish off the top 10 now that's a huge amount and uh, the question up here well which one of those are our allies and depends where you live in the world you'll have to take a view but um, you know we've got some uh, basket cases Venezuela um, yeah, we've done a video on that. Understand what's been going on there. We've done a few videos on Saudi Arabia. I haven't done anything on uh, Canada, featured Iraq and, um, you know, many um, the, the, the recent bidding round there bought interest from Chinese companies and Iraqi companies, but no European companies, no US companies. Russian Federation, well, the same could be said as we talked about in Iraq. There's, uh, there's certainly been no American or uh, European activity um, over there in recent times for, for very obvious reasons. Um, here's QA, UA, I think we've been through those. But this is quite interesting. If we added all these European countries together, and this is the 2020 oil reserves position. So if you add them all together, that comes to 13.6 billion. Now, we don't exclude we don't include any reserves that are within the federation the russian federation which are kind of you know west of the urals in sort of europe as it were so it's excluding that but it's including all those countries and they're listed there so we've just taken a subset of them and 13.6 billion if you look at this graph here 13.6 is kind of around about somewhere around about here isn't it it really doesn't even make the top 10 so Europe, including the UK, extremely reliant on all of these major centres for, for any oil production, any future 
uh, oil production. But uh, looking at uh, UK reserves, well, again, this is the 2020 position. Only uh, about 2.5 billion barrels. Now, on this scale, this is the trillions scale, but uh, this is 2.5 billion barrels. It was about 8 billion barrels back in 1980, but there's been steady production throughout, and you can see a steady decline throughout as well. Basically, we describe UK as in the noise. So if we think by changing um, policies, uh, we're going to uh, make a huge impact on uh, emissions in the by by altering things in the UK, dream on. Here's Africa, and you can see with Africa um, at the bottom here, Libya. Um, you know, certainly been one of the major producers over the last um, four decades. But uh, you know, stabilised out in terms of the reserves, um, and we can look at the uh, production as well shortly. Here's uh, here's Nigeria, the second one in the axis here. Now. Um, Libya hopes to get to um, the two million barrels of of oil per day production, but that's uh, that's a, a an ambition, a target which they're going to have a licensing round for to hopefully achieve. Uh, you can see the split here between sort of South Sudan and Sudan, so that kind of that's these this sort of anomaly in here obviously this is excluding all the recent discoveries that we made in namibia and uh, any other post 2020 oil discoveries because the reserves in the um, in the statistical review only go back to 2020 now um, are these new finds are they enough to offset production decline well yeah we can have a look at that uh, in the future when we look at south america and the caribbean proved oil reserves you see the top graph here, really distorted by the Orinoco oil sands in Venezuela. And uh, these were kind of uh, committed to uh, to being reserves. And around about the sort of 2007, 2009 period. And you can see uh, they've, they've become extremely significant, although few of them are actually currently being produced. If we take out Venezuela as you can see in this lower graph here. Well, what we can see is in the sort of the last decade, we've seen quite a lot of decline and that's generally, it's uh, it's actually Brazil that uh, has, has been the, the source of, of that decline. Others are declining as well. Uh, and this graph, of course, doesn't include all of the reserves and discoveries that is going to be coming in here from places like Guyana and Suriname and, and other parts of the region where... Um, you know, we, we've had significant discoveries since then, but that's the picture to date. Russian Federation. Now, this one, we, we are scratching our heads with it. You can see over here, it's USSR, and then USSR got broken up, and here's the Russian Federation. But as the Russian Federation came into being, it went from uh, what looks to be about to 60 billion barrels up to almost uh, 110, 115 billion barrels of reserves now um, perhaps somebody would like to um, you know put a comment in the uh, in the video below to describe what, what, what was the basis of that um, but it does seem quite unusual and then you can see here uh, things going along and we've got Kazakhstan now this is the uh, this is the finding of the the wells in the North Caspian uh, region of Kazakhstan, uh, the likes of Tengiz and, and the various offshore fields up there. So uh, in the last decade or more, uh, it's been pretty uh, pretty steady in this region in terms of reserves. And of course, many of these countries, particularly like Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan, and to a degree Azerbaijan, lots and lots of gas in those regions. Not being reflected in just this oil only production data so um but that's the oil picture for russian federation and um, the former ussr states north america and mexico well uh, if we put these three together you can see canada here in yellow and this is the uh, the tar sands they dominate the picture here and of course this is sort of the athabasca and uh, various other areas around there just dominating, booked as reserves around about uh, 1998 by the looks of it. Um, and then you can see overlaying on that is USA here in brown with Mexico on top. Now, if we take out Canada, because it's kind of distorting the picture, and then all of a sudden we see the USA, their reserves, 
going along, declining away, declining away up until around about 2008. And then all of a sudden, the reserves really start to pick up. And that's to do with the unconventionals. It's fracking, it's shale. This is really, really, it's proved, it's double their proved reserves. Fantastic success story. Uh, on, the, on the other hand, you can see Mexico here in grey, essentially has been in decline. Don't really understand what these, uh, this little uh, hiccup is here. Maybe somebody can put that in the comments below. Uh, and then you can see this is getting thinner and thinner through time. And uh, reserves are definitely declined significantly uh, in Mexico. Now, um, there have been two major ride downs. Uh, again, if anybody knows the, the background to those, here's one over here and another one. Obviously, there was a, a short period of optimism and then uh, reality set back in. So I think we should probably uh, go historically, just look and forget about that period of overstatement of reserves. But hey, that's happened in a number of places throughout history and throughout companies. Now let's get on to uh, global oil production. And we can see on this graph here, this is every country. This bizarre change here is from the USSR becoming the Russian Federation. And it sort of looks like it's almost a very clean break, very different to the reserves pictures. But the production didn't have any uh, doubling on the day, which, of course, you wouldn't expect it to. Um, and then you see overall, you can see that back in 1965 here, we were, uh, the world was producing about uh, 30 and a bit million barrels of, uh, of oil per day. And then through time, it's gone up, 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 up. <clears throat> Here's the COVID dip. And I would say, looking at those numbers, we're, we're just passing now the uh, the production levels that were achieved pre-COVID, So, um, and it's still rising. And it, there's been a sort of rise over the last four years. So that's the trend. Um, the major increase, and or the reason for the increase, well, you can see this grey band here. Um, that's been thinning through time up until around about 2008, and then all of a sudden it picks up. And uh, that's been the major increase. That's from USA. If we look at that in isolation, this is a fantastic picture. We've done a video on this. It's on our channel. Um, it's a few years old, but I tell you what, it covers most of the reasons and rationales behind this uh, this quite amazing production. Well, without the T, I noticed. Never mind. We did rush this one out, so uh, apologies for that. So you can see the decline from here around about 11 million barrels a day he was getting down around about 2008. We're around about seven, eight, eight million barrels a day. And then unconventionals, shale fracking. Um, it's gone from 6.8 million barrels a day up to, in 2023, 19.4 million barrels of oil. So it's almost treble the production. Now, if this is your economy, that's a huge benefit to the economy. And the US has, uh, has you know, banking crisis, a big low. And this production level is still showing no signs of uh, of easing. It's it's still growing. It's uh, an amazing success story for U.S. oil production. UK and Norway. So on the top here, we've got the UK production. Um, you can see really starting back in 1975, ramping up, then a massive dip here. This is actually Piper Alpha and the effects of uh, of that major disaster uh, recovers. And then from round about uh, 1998, basically a decline that's uh, halted for a while, but certainly uh, in recent years, there's been a major decline and it's about to collapse. Now, we've done videos on that. We talk about it a lot. We've warned people it's going to come. It's going to happen. And when it does, our balance of payments is going to go to ratchet. We're going to have a whole bunch of, uh, of oil coming in from overseas because the demand is still there. People still want oil. They want to run their cars with petrol, with diesel. So it's going to happen. And uh, yeah, electric cars, well, they're taking off. I know a lot of people who said, I've tried it once. I'm not doing that again. Um, anyway, we'll see. We'll see where that goes. Norway, on the other hand, well, they, um, they've had a later incline in production, peaking here around about the turn of the uh, millennium. And then uh, they, they went into a decline as well. But around about uh, 2012, and since then, they've managed to halt that decline. Now, there are reasons for that. 
Norway is generally less mature. They've got a much larger continental shelf. It goes from the North Sea through the Norwegian Sea right up to the Barents Sea. And um, they've had continued exploration and appraisal activity. Very, <laughs> in contrast to the UK, which has been a disaster. And um, honestly, it's uh, this is one of the cause. We've just never managed to fill the hopper and the production has just gone down and down and down. Anyway, um, Norway, steady production over the last decade. Now, put the two together there so that you can see uh, see what's happened um, on, on both of those. Now, um, we're proud to have analysed, recorded and edited this video on the day this data was released by the Energy Institute. It's the 20th of June. Um, but there is a big Euros game about to start um, that uh, we all want to watch. So we've ended our analysis for now. There is more to come, so subscribe to the channel. Put a comment below. Give us a thumbs up. Ring the bell if you want to be notified when we get new releases out. Send us an email. There's our uh, website. Hope you enjoyed the video. Lots more to come. See you soon. Bye for now.